Jimmy, you're wearing the same shirt two weeks in a row. Is that allowed? Actually, I've been wearing it for a few days now. Kiss. Here it is. This is what we're talking about today. We are live <clears throat> on a metal voice, the metal panel on Sunday. Giles Lavery, Perrin Wolfson, and Kenny, the man on the street in New York. Today, guys, we're going to talk about two things. Number one, of course, the new era of Kiss. We'll talk about that afterwards. But first, we're going to talk about the final humanoid farewell tour. So the humans have left the building. Kiss have left the building. Kenny was there in New York, amongst many, many other people. Just kind of give us a lowdown of the, the atmosphere, the feeling, the buildup. Uh, and the show itself, you know, and uh, guys, feel free to ask Kenny questions as we start off with Kenny. Well, what was I, the buildup like for the first, the last week before Kiss? I, I've, I've never seen anything like it in Manhattan. I've been I've 60 years old almost, and I've never seen anything like it. I started going to concerts at Madison Square Garden in 1978. Honestly, I've never, the Blitz started Monday with uh, Metro cards that you Take this on the subway. Here. Put it right on here. Put it on your. So and they, see. they yeah, had yeah, exactly. special kiss ones, which immediately sold out, of course. And I was lucky enough to have people that work at Madison Square Garden, the construction guys that got them for me. And then they did newspapers every day, New York Post special editions that were in special areas. That was Wednesday. Thursday was a special tribute to the uh, the Empire State Building. Beautiful photo shoot. And then Friday was the last shows but uh, i've never seen a media blitz like this at all the merch the pop-up stores i waited two and a half hours with sam wall jimmy we they, they were sold out nobody they should have told people on the line we got in there they had they had smalls and triple x's left on on four shirt styles but it was uh amazing scott braun did an excellent job there yesterday covering the uh yeah shout out to scott braun the photographer of uh, north america for the metal voice Mm -hmm. uh you know some excellent shots and he's going to be coming out with even more shots he's developing them as we speak yep. and people I've, will uh, see the mood of new york i've worked with scott for years at bb kings i was uh his sort of as a camera assistant i'd hold his camera bag and stuff i know him for years he's a great guy but um so, going ahead and right up into the show the mil the build up i've never seen anything like it but uh going so, in it was okay. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's go back, guys. If you have questions before the show, oh, sure, sure. Go were there? Yeah, people... I, want ask, I want to ask Kenny a question. So, I, I, I like, I was debating with a friend. A friend of mine said, "Well, of course they have taxi cabs and and the Empire State Building and the Metro cards. They're they're paying for it." And I said to him, "Just because you can pay for it, like I'm pretty sure if Pearl Jam said we're gonna plop yeah. down some money and we want you to light up the Empire State Building with Pearl Jam imagery." They would. And we want a taxi cab and we want a metro. The, it, it would be no, you know, it, it just wouldn't happen because as big a band Pearl Jam as an example is, they're just not culturally iconic enough to all walks of life that it would kind of really matter to anybody. So, yeah, I, I'm sure there it was a paid for media blitz to a certain extent. But just because you go to somebody with money doesn't mean they're going to say, yeah, we'll we'll partake in that. Like the New York. So so, so, so you're so you're place. saying was the Manhattan Building and all the taxis with Kiss paid for or not or a deal struck Gene struck a deal, Kenny? I would I would think they paid for some of it, but most of it is advertising because even the mayor, Mayor Adams, declared it Kiss Day on one of the. It was Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. I think it could have been Friday. It was declared Kiss Day. I think it was Thursday because they went to the Empire State Building. They did a lot of promo shoots all around the city at the uh, the Dress to Kill spot, the street corner. They were all over the place on on Thursday, but um, I do believe what, we paid. What for about out of towners? Out of towners? Are, are oh, we getting all over, Jimmy? It started Monday. I work in Times Square, and I'm right in the heart. With you know, and I'm out all the time in the street looking. It started by Thursday. It was it was like Halloween. Friday, everybody was in makeup. At least one out of every ten people were walking by in kiss makeup. These these young kids in my lobby never saw anything like this. They were like, "Wow, you old men get down!" And, and because it was old old people, the young people getting dressed up. But so I swear, Scott told Scott told me there was people from Sweden. He was taking pictures of Sweden, right, right, from Canada, from all California. Over. We're, we're talking about this was a global event. Yeah. Everyone going the, to New York. The gentleman next to me and us, his, his the wife, the wife and husband next to me and my wife were from Australia, and they had laid big bucks down. I'm not kidding you. And 
he was he, all he said was i don't mind i have to be in this building but there's a light rig in our way i said yeah there was there's nothing on the ticket that said that so we just had a good time we really we did we we just said just to, we were just there to enjoy it like when when i told him my camera was on the fritz jimmy just said just enjoy the moment and i did you were right all right i'm always right yep yeah. except when i'm wrong <laughs> except when i'm wrong apparently <laughs> Charles, any questions for Kenny? Yeah. Well, it certainly seems like an event. I mean, a lot of these, a lot of bands, you hear about all these so-called pop-up stores and all these catchy turns of phrase these days that almost feel like they're thrust upon people and forced upon people. Where and they and people sort of don't really interact with them. Maybe a few people do. Maybe it's limited to diehard fans. But it seems like these events, the general public were interacting with with all of these things rather than it just sort of being there and people going, oh, it's something to do with KISS, I guess. It means something to KISS fans. It seemed like it it kind of went a little bit beyond that where people were getting getting into it. it, it Would it that be right? Did, uh, you're 100% correct. Definitely did. Never seen anything like it. You know, and me and Perrin were talking about this. This is, you know, how much of it was paid for by the city? What do you think, Kenny? And how much, uh, like, I mean, think about it. This is a tourist. I'm not getting political. They're cutting back on everything. The police, the fire department, garbage pickups are getting cut back. So it's insanity down there right now. I think they had to pick up a lot of security around the garden, the, 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 Friday and Saturday, they probably had to throw a lot of security around there. But I, I didn't see a big police presence there that night. Like, you know, it wasn't over pushed because they're running around. There's a lot of protests going on all over the city. So they're they're spread thin. But I, I, I could see Gene sitting down with the city councilors of, uh, you know, the district, the, the borough it's of Manhattan. How you keep, it's interesting how you keep saying Gene. Well, because Gene's they the, the, the manager. One. He but he's the iron thing. fist of the group, right? No, he's not. Read, read Paul. Paul's book. Paul always says the oversimplification is that Gene's the business guy and Paul's the music guy. It's very much sometimes the opposite. And then there's Could also Doctor Gee as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's say then Kiss is sitting down with the businessmen and the city councilors <clears throat> of the borough. And saying, look, guys, we're going to bring in, you know, six million bucks. We want you to invest two million bucks in this, you know, the uh, the Empire State Building and the taxis well, and all that fun well, stuff. I'm sure they paid for some of that, Jimmy. I'm sure they did. It's advertising. They they had to pay for the Empire State Building, at least part yeah. of it. I'm sure basically what happened. I don't think the city spent anything out of pocket to do it. But let's say it would normally cost you, I don't know, $10 million to commandeer the Empire State Building. They said, okay, because you're going to generate this much tourism for us, instead of you paying us $10 million, you only need to pay us $2 million. And so we still have $2 million coming in. Plus, we have all this tourism coming in. And it doesn't cost you as much. And I'm I'm totally being fictitious with numbers. I have no idea what it would cost to... You know, I have no idea how much how much how much actual tourism a couple of kids shows would really generate. I mean, this is not Paul Simon in Central Park. Is keep in mind, uh, but I could be wrong. Well, look, it was two, it was two nights. What does the garden hold, uh, Kenny? Twenty twenty thousand, just under. Oh, uh, little little more. Oh yeah, yeah. for yeah, first show. Maybe maybe nineteen. Well, I'm sorry, maybe nineteen thousand. I think you're right. It's not. It's not Yankee but Stadium. They have to have the stage. You got to think they they took about a quarter of it off because they didn't sell backstage. Like mm-hmm. Aerosmith sold everything yeah, around. Yeah. yeah, they they only sold like three quarters of the venue. At least, well, maybe a little more. Maybe nine eighty percent. Yeah. Regardless, okay. though, there's spinoff income that, like, again, you're you're not gonna, you know, I mean, yes, Kiss paid out of pocket to do some of this stuff. I'm sure they would tell you it was a worthwhile investment, and I'm sure the city was happy to take their money and give them oh, a little cool. bit of a break. Capacity is 19,500. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and look, tell us about you go. Okay. You walk in the show, the merch stand. What's, what's the story at the merch stand? Well, here's what I've never seen them do this before either. And this was what was annoying ticket holders starting. I think the pop-up shops were only special shirts. They were different. I don't have any of them to show you. They were gone. You, you, two, three hours you waited, they were gone. People were selling that stuff for $200 right away. What they did at the garden, and I've never seen them do this before, was 
Right as you walk in, like to the Rangers, the Knicks, a concert, they have two side venues and one little small shop in the front and two on the side. They opened them up at nine o'clock in the morning on, I think, yeah, Thursday, no, Friday and Saturday. And by the time we got there at three, any specialized shirt was sold out. Like the the date, the shirt with the, the last date or something, they were gone. So if you wanted to get this, they actually, the security guard told me, you you have to come back and get on this line early, like at four o'clock and be the first one in to get upstairs just to get a shirt that says the date on it. Like Put it right know. on you. Put it right on you as soon as we can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the background's eating it up. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. just to say the, that's nice. That's it, that date, that's yeah. the only. That's, that's the trophy, right? The trophy. Is that. And, and you know what? We went. We had to go through hoops to get that. It was said, and the the tour program. Every, I'm glad I bought that Wednesday Jeez. afternoon. I had a chance to get it. Uh, they had a box of them at, at the outside the pop up store when I stopped by it, and I grabbed it right away. But Kenny, let me ask you what that cost because I saw somebody I know selling one online yesterday for one hundred and twenty dollars. The, the the program was fifty, so that I saw somebody selling it for one hundred and twenty. I'm like, I'm uh, telling you, listen, the, the 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 Metro cards were going for fifty dollars. It's insane. The newspapers were going for fifty dollars. Crazy. I had a stack of ten in my locker, and a guy goes sell them. The guy who gave them to me sell them. He goes, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, they're going on eBay as the newspapers are going on eBay, right? Yeah, they are they're selling for like a hundred bucks or whatever. It was. Everything that they did it, it, it is being sold for triple the price that you paid for it there. Right. It was sad because people were buying. You saw it, like they have special event posters. People were buying ten or fifty. You know he's an eBay guy. He's, who was he buying ten or fifteen posters for? Christmas gifts. <laughs> it's all right. So you 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 pass the merch stand. You and your wife. You take your seats. You have this big obstruction in front yeah, of you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we decided just to bring it. I, I text you. I said, "Can you believe this?" And then you put the picture up. I just meant to show you this lighting rig in front of me. <laughs> All right, so you and Michelle, your wife, are sitting there. And it, yep. Opening act comes on. What, what was what, what was the reaction with Paul Stanley's son? Yeah, I saw him before, but we could see the pay per view event because it was right on our end of the uh, the, okay. the other side. We could, where we were sitting, we were looking right down. Like if it was a hockey event, we were looking at it at the other goal, and we could see the girl interviewing people on the couches and hear them. Yeah, but it was it was just straight. The guest. Again, Desmond Child was possibly the best one out of the all. The kids were all right, but you know, Chris Angel, I, I don't know why they brought him out. I thought there would be more musicians out there, that, like Sebastian Bach or somebody. Yeah, well, Sebastian Bach was like he wasn't interviewed, but like they they on the pay per view they showed Sebastian Bach crying they in the audience. There. They were in the they audience. John Five know, was there. Uh, I mean, Tommy Thayer brought in all his friends from Black yeah, and Blue, and they they were there, and that was kind of nice. See, they even had Jamie St. James for a second, and. Uh, you know, it was it nice like, to have them backstage. I'm yeah, surprised I mean, Dave Grohl didn't stick his nose in. <laughs> oh, I was going to start playing drums or something. We actually Grohl. thought Dave Grohl was going to come out for rock and roll all night. We actually, that, was that, the, guy, that guy will attend. He's the literally, literally the personification of the guy that would attend the opening of an envelope. You know. <laughs> all right. So you sit through Paul Stanley's son's band, Amber. What they call? What, what are they the, called? Amber. Amber wow. Well, I'm wild. Wild. And it, I felt bad. It was like maybe a tent that opened. Uh, hardly anybody was there. Okay, so no one really cares. Come okay, on, let's gotcha. take pictures of the audience. I'm like, well, there's nobody down there. <clears throat> so At that point, can you say that, I, you know, I can't remember. I heard a song or two of theirs. Could you say this guy sounds like Paul? He looks like his father. He, he looks I like it, but, but singing-wise, singing-wise, vocal-wise. Mm, he's got a well, little... Stanley's a tough off. act to follow, man. Yeah, he's got a little... He doesn't have that twang like Paul has. That's not a Queens accent. I don't know what that is. I grew up like two towns over from Paul. I don't know what that accent is. <laughs> yeah, well, I think he grew up in California, so I think I think uh, Evan was born in California. But well, Evan you know, definitely people, has a different accent. But Paul has a that's a twang on him. Yeah. P- people say, oh, if there's another version of Kiss, you know, Nick Simmons will replace his father, and Evan Stanley will replace his father. And I don't believe that for a second. Like I, I think the kids, we're not there like, yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Or that's the new era. We're not there yet. You hold that thought. Keep yeah. that thought. Yeah, that's let's, still, well, let, let's go back to um let's go let's go back to the show. Detroit Rock City. They there's a what's the crowd feeling like, right? They start with the song. That's probably the most emotional I got through the whole show. When they the lights went down, I heard rock and roll. I knew it was coming. You, you get the announcement, oh, are you ready? You know, the hottest band in the land. I've been seeing that since I, I was a kid. So 
So you're not, you're not going to see it again, and it starts hitting you, and and that was it. I thought I would be a little more towards the end of the show, but I wasn't. I was actually a lot better off. I was more uh, choked up in the beginning of the show when they first came out, and and that was it. I guess after two hours, I I was okay. It was you know, it was nice to see him. I was glad I was in the building, but the energy from the minute they hit the stage, the crowd didn't stop. Oh, oh, for, I'm sorry, for like oh yeah, which. They could it's have, like, why are we playing this? <laughs> they could have removed that and played any number of the other classics on any of the albums. I mean, that that I understand it's from the last album, but I just, even so, yeah, you mean say yeah, say yeah, say yeah. I mean, it, it's not even. I mean, that's not even from the last album. That's from Sonic Boom, but it is the best song on Sonic Boom. Well, I'll give it that. It sounds like a crazy no, night. I, I think to people me, were looking for a classic. Bad. I did. I did. I didn't mind uh, Psycho Circus. You know, the crowd went crazy when that came on. But when Say Yeah came on, they it kind of died the crowd out a little bit. That was the only mm -hmm. lull. Then I wouldn't say a lull, and I wouldn't say a lull, where the energy wasn't up one hundred and ten percent. Because from the hit, when the moment they hit the stage, the place was a lot. I've been at the Garden for Stanley Cup Finals and everything, and that place can rock. I, AC DC, the place used to move. I mean. But they had the place moving. Only one time did the whole top end sway, and that was during rock and roll all night. It was swaying; you could feel it. Everybody was standing up, and you. you I was looking at my wife. I said, "You never." You know, this has happened. You too, I think, made it sway too once when I was there. But it, it, it the energy at the garden's insane. All right, so let's talk about the set list. We go around the room here. It was the exact. I would say it was the exact same set list in Montreal and everywhere else, maybe like a minor tweak or two, but I, I don't know. I was kind of disappointed, but uh, what do you think there, Giles? Did you see the set list? Uh, no. It, 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 it's, it's, Didn't it's Montreal true. get canceled? No, it was Toronto and Ottawa right after that got canceled. Although, and Toronto and Ottawa got canceled. Yeah, okay. yeah. And Indiana, Indiana. That was Perrin, right. the set list, did it disappoint you? Like seeing, okay, this is the same exact thing you know i mean I'll, how can I'll, you compare I'll, montreal versus new york where it all began right and no all week i went back and forth on this because obviously it's a big production tour everything is synchronized everything is you know so i said to myself during the week okay it's the last ever show they're a new york band you'd think there might be something different yes. in there yeah. but then i said to myself how do you do that you can't really finish with rock and roll all night and then all the confetti has fallen and all that's happened and then you tack this little set at the end so then you're talking about switching things out. And if you're talking about switching things out, let's say you take out Say Yeah and you put in Plaster Caster, how does that affect whatever they have ready with lights and cues and just different things? And it could be done if you want to put the work in, but it's not like, you know, there were two weeks before this show and then you can kind of change up some things. It was just another, you know, they, they played Balt they played the Garden the night before. They played Baltimore two nights before that. They played Chicago two nights before that. So... I was hopeful that some of these songs that they were playing at the VIP soundcheck, like, you know, Parasite and, and she and, and Pastor Master might get played as a nod to this is where we started. We're going to give you something special. But it, as the night went on, it was just becoming clear that they're following the exact same sequence. And I said to my wife, we were watching the pay-per-view. I said, if they play say, yeah, now, because if anything was going to get taken out for an old song, it was going to be that. So I said, if they play say, yeah, that's it. It's going to be the same set. And then they All played right. it. And it was, so yeah, I, I was, if I have one disappointment on the night, I'm disappointed that they didn't do something extra or something special for the last live show for fans who, okay, forget what the base price of tickets was. There were resales going for thousands of dollars. I saw a front row ticket yesterday going for $17,000 there were four or $5,000 tickets if you wanted really good seats in the lower bowl or, or, you know, first few rows of the floor. People paid an arm and a leg for this. That would have been nice to see a little bit something more. Giles, is it like here we are upset that the set list was was identical, but let's let's be realistic. This is a massive show. You've seen Kiss. You can't just move stuff here and there. There are sequences. There are lighting directors. There are cameramen this has to go as planned can they just toss in songs here and well, there yeah, or just I mean, yeah, I've, been, been, I've, I've been involved in big productions as much as small productions and medium-sized productions like parents said it's it is it, it anything can be done you can do anything you want 
it's just going to cost more money and it's more work and more people have to be on the ball and more people need to know what's happening and what's not happening and when it's happening. It can be done. I mean, it is a little bit surprising. The final two shows in New York, there wasn't a single ex member, not even a Bruce Kulick. That's yeah. You know, not not even not even just coming out for for rock and roll all night party every day at the end or something. It's like they really seemed intent on keeping keeping it as just another you know not aside from everything you've described, um, Kenny, keeping it as far as what's happening on the stage, another night on the tour. If you, I mean, you you argue, I mean, you saw, except for, again, like you said, what's happening outside the building and perhaps a little bit more extra energy because it's the home team in New York. Right, right. You saw the same show. You saw the same show in Montreal. You saw the same show in Australia, I guess, if they went there. But it, the guy in Australia told me it was the same exact show. That he it, was really, it really surprises me there wasn't a little bit more this is the last ever kiss show let's make it different than like melbourne australia you know but anyway you know guys i am counter was the same that that that's another point i i was i was so i don't know if the word is upset but so disappointed and i think that's what i'm trying to say that here they are they started in new york this is their hometown right no New York groove, no shock me, no, I don't know, just something they're completely not, they're different. They're not going to get out and play an Ace Frehley cover tune. I mean, I, I can't imagine that. With Ace, to my point, or bring in Bob, uh, Bruce, and, you know, right. you know, play Bruce. a song with Bruce. Uh, my point is, it's to your point too, Giles, not, no little nugget, not even one little nugget. Not, not even, not even a big, not even a big screen just showing every ex member and their name underneath saying thank you for your service or something right. mention nothing they didn't mention not, not even like a you know not even like a nod to bob kulik not a nod to bruce kulik not a nod to to bill a coin even eric Carr. yeah no, you're eric you're right neil, neil bogart bill bill a coin they could have had a little even if it was an introduction before the show where they yeah. They thank thank you for whatever you however you want to phrase it. I'll just say thank you for your service, and they put these people up on a screen. They didn't. It really seemed like there wasn't as much finality associated with this as you would expect. Yeah. You know. Well, it's very kiss to want to leave things open ended to a certain extent, right? Well, they definitely did. They didn't leave yeah. the, door, the play without makeup. Or, I, 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 I would guess they were negotiating with Ace and Peter's people to the last few days because right I think the they're, they're prepping. They're prepping just in case. Think, I mean, you, does it, does and they shut the door. Any, they shut yeah. the door. Does anyone so, have so, any factual information on that? Or? No, I, I'm, no, gonna I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. I'm gonna that. I think people... because you know why? Because they were sound checking. Shock me. They were sound and they never played it. That could only mean maybe, just maybe, Ace might just jump on stage. Hey, they they that, played "Shock Me" without Ace on the pre on, on other on other makeup tours with Tommy's in the band. They would played "Shock Me" and they didn't do it on this tour, but they had played "Shock." Tommy's played. But Shock why? Me. Why were they prepping for it? Well, why were they playing "Plaster Caster" at the VIP sound checks? Like, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe they were thinking about it. Maybe they're they're tossing uh, the idea around. Like, they're Jim, I disagree just... with you on this one. I think the Ace and Peter ship sailed a long time ago. I think I don't Ace think they were ever planned on it. I, I think Ace. I I, I, I agree. I think it was almost like they wanted to make a point. You yeah. know, like they weren't gonna do that. They weren't gonna just like they weren't gonna perform with them at the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, I mean, it's been pretty much out there. When when Ace started badmouthing them in the press, Kiss pretty much came out and said, this guy wants like just outlandish, outlandish things to be at the last show. Like, you know, sorry, Ace, you're not worth a million dollars to come appear at the last show. You're just not worth that. You don't you don't sell one more ticket. All the tickets are sold. The tickets are sold. The pay-per-view is sold. Well, you see, th no, that that's from a financial that's yeah. from a financial perspective. I don't look at it that way. To me, it it's it's such a final thing. It would have been nice. And it's New York, for the love of God. It's New York. Ace should have been there and they should have freaking paid him. That's what I think. And Peter should have been there too. And Peter should have been there. I know a guy too. that works for Peter, like does stuff with him. He was at the last Richie Scarlet show with me and he was talking. There was no plan. And this was six months ago. He said they have no plans on coming. They're not, they weren't going. 
Well, what about Bruce? Bruce Gulick? Yeah, why, why, why couldn't they reach out to him? Like, what the heck? Yeah, they should have had. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty it. sure he could have been there if he wanted to be. I mean, I'm look. Bruce sent a nice Peter and Bruce yesterday earlier in the day I published agree. nice messages to them. Like, I, I'm pretty sure. Look, if if Jamie St. James was there from Black and Blue, Tommy's old bandmate, and other people, I'm sure if Bruce wanted to be there. I mean, Jamie St. James was backstage with them. I'm sure Bruce Gulick could have been backstage. You know, sometimes. You know, I, I've i been in situations in life where at one point I was excluded and then I was invited back. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm not part of this anymore. And I just kind of feel weird being there. And I don't want to be there. And, you know, may, it, you know, Bruce might not have wanted to be there. Other, some people might not have wanted to be there. We'll, we'll never know. And or maybe I'll know one thing. Cool. Bob Kulik would have loved to be there. I tell you that definitely much. Been there. <laughs> Bob, Bob would have been there. Bob Kulik, Bob Kulik should have been there. Yeah. But I mean, sadly, yeah. uh, that was, he would have loved to be there. That wasn't to be. Now, uh, the, the interesting thing is the, the non-makeup era was was a pretty big era for them. They had some legitimate big hits in that period. Mm -hmm. And it would have been nice to have had some representative of that era there, yeah. aside from Gene and Paul in makeup. Yeah. But yeah. again, this is all stuff that may still be to come. Just because they've announced a bunch of avatars doesn't mean everything else is off the table. You know what I mean? All right. So let's get into it. That's a good segue there. Kenny, well, <laughs> they mean everybody. They out. The only difference in the shows I heard from the Friday night to the Saturday night show was... Um, the cloud of smoke, and they mm. vanished into the, the. They disappeared off the stage into a cloud of smoke, only to be replaced by these crazy lightning and stuff. And then the avatars appeared on the screen, and that's when Paul said, uh, uh, "End is not the beginning." So I watched the. Uh, I was. I know Perrin was uh, up uh, last night. I'm not sure, Kenny, if you were up or Giles, you were up, but I was kind of looking at the timer. You know, countdown. Yeah, I and, saw it by accident. Yeah. So there's a timer right on their website to midnight at Eastern Standard Time. And then at midnight, there was videos. There was two videos. There was one showing like, the KISS band as we know it today. I'm actually like halfway through the, there's a documentary that's been posted on the page. I'm, I'm yes. about halfway through it. Yeah. yeah. So, so one part of it shows how they created these avatars. So they're just sort of like motion sensors on the bodies of KISS as they're kind of performing, the real band that is. And then the second part is interviewing the band about what the next era will be. And the next era, as everybody knows right now, is an AI avatar um, performance. But we don't know what capacity that performance means. Is it going to be a Vegas residency where people just go there and they have that experience? Or is it going to be a traveling sort of hologram roadshow kind of similar to Dio? So let's get some thoughts on this. Uh, I'll start off with uh, Giles. What do you What do you think? I mean... Would you go attend, the question is, would you attend a traveling road show that had these avatars and, you know, a light show? And I I wouldn't care if it was traveling or not. It would need to be close by. If I was traveling or it was traveling, is inconsequential. If it was close and it well, was... Well, actually, sorry. Would you prefer to go to Vegas as a stationary residency or would you prefer to see it close by on tour? I never, I, I never, I, I, I wouldn't, I never prefer to go to vegas i hate vegas um, all right just... but but to answer your question yeah is and this is i'm gonna choose my words carefully here this is untested territory for the most part abba have done it but abba is a burlesque production vegas you know sit down and eat chicken and watch a show kind of thing <laughs> but one thing, and I said it about the Dio hologram, I said this is never going to take off, and it didn't. Because heavy rock and heavy metal is about, it's a tribal thing, as Gene even says numerous times, but it's also audience, artist, audience, artist, feeding that energy back and forth. That's why when you that's why you see people in the front row trying to doing everything they can to get attention from the artist. And it's and it's about and it's a reach out and touch the artist based genre. You take the artist away, I can't imagine. Again, it, I'm not. It depends what capacity they do it, but it's not going to be a substitute for a living, breathing kiss at all. 
That's any very, good point. See, very good point. Any more than going to see the song remains the same at a movie theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's interesting? I'm gonna and, and I'm gonna let Perrin answer the next question. They're putting an AI element in there to address what you just mentioned. So in other words, when a fan screams out Paul, the AI will recognize the hey Paul and go, hey you. So it's an interactive, but I, I agree with you, Giles. Cool. I think once you take away the humanoid factor, things could fall apart. Perrin, so before you answer this, no, no, before you answer this, let's go back to what you said before about we didn't know if this new era was gonna be Paul's son and Gene's son taking over as kiss. Right? What were your thoughts on that? If that did happen, if that we didn't know, well, we didn't know, right? Well, I, I, first, I, I thought the new era was going to be first a break for X number of months. Then I, I thought, and I still do think, the cruises and the conventions will continue because where I think the real money and interest is, is you know, before they reunited, they would do these conventions and they're, they would do non makeup acoustic sets, kind of like the Kiss Unplugged thing that they did on MTV all those years ago. And those were really well received. And even now on the cruises, they bring out Bruce and he does him and Todd Kearns and Zach Throne and they do all the 80s songs. And I, I, I thought we were going to go from this to the cruises and the conventions and then maybe to a version of Kiss, kind of like the Australian Pink Floyd experience and the musical box by Genesis, like tribute bands that are the official one and that play big venues with big production. I thought that's where we were going. Uh so I was a little put off and surprised by the the AI avatar thing. I don't think we were going there yet. I'm sure Gene kind of caught on to what ABBA was doing and the success they're having with it and said, we can do that. One thing, guys, I want to correct you on, please, and I've seen this online too, do not compare this to the Dio thing. The Dio thing is this. This exactly. has the potential to be this. I mean, when, when Dio was at the end, when he was still alive, he was playing the Fillmore in San Francisco to a thousand people. No, no, but I, but I think what Giles is referring to is it failed because heavy metal audiences versus ABBA it, audiences. But that's, that's the, ABBA audiences, they don't care if they put on some glasses on and, you know, uh, that's kind of, it, it's just easy to digest, digest stuff. It, metal it, or hard rock Jimmy, is it, an interaction of human and experience. It's it's partially why it failed, and I do think Giles is correct, and I think you can't replace the crackle of electricity and the excitement that it was in the building that Kenny described yesterday. So I think ultimately this will fail, but I mean, the Dio thing was done, it was almost like a projector onto a crystal ball of Ronnie James Dio. Like yeah, you said. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a good point. We're talking about a hologram versus an avatar. There's There's yeah. at least... There's a, a leap year in technology since the hologram of Dio, which again failed. Like I can um, totally see this at the sphere in like the and new you, and you say D, you know you say Dio is this big, Kiss is much bigger. Well, ABBA is fifty billion times bigger than Kiss. Let's yeah. put it that way. Like, absolutely. And, and I and and even the ABBA has not been a international resounding must see it show. Yeah, it's, it's been a, a well-received well, it's, it's, it's well it's it's like. well received, well, well received event in London with some good reviews. It hasn't been this, oh my gosh, we need to go see this. The Guns N' Roses tour has done better than the ABBA uh, Avatar. So I, I again, I think they're going to struggle. I really do. Yeah, I can see it at the Sphere in Las Vegas because the Sphere is one of those things that it's, it's 360 yeah. degrees. They say the Sphere venue is actually, like the reviews of U2 are that the band is almost obscured by everything going on around it. So that kind of a venue would actually lead itself pretty well to this kind of a show, whereas the band's not even there anyway. The show is... It, it, yeah, it's, it's going to need, it's gonna be, it's gonna be like a heavy rock equivalent of going to like the, the planetarium or something. There's going to have yes. to be something that you, yeah. something that you can't get. I, I, guys, I, 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 pre I pretty much think this is going to this is going to do well as if it's a residency. Kenny. It's going to go to Vegas. It's definitely. Kenny, you know what, Kenny, Kenny. Kenny. Out. Same company is running out. Is running this one. The same. This company. is the important thing. Kenny, Kenny would you have rather, but let me ask Kenny this. Would you have ra rather see clone kiss tour, you know, sort of Gene and Paul being replaced by whoever their sons are not, or would you rather see this avatar experience? I think I'd rather see the clone tour. At first, the clones. And, and Jimmy, what I'm getting at is we're going to get there. I, so this leaves them an out. This leaves them an out to do this. And if it's not the success they're hoping it's going to be, 
They can say, well, KISS has always been a band of the people and the people have spoken and the people want real, real live rock and roll. So what we're going to give you is Tommy, Eric and two other guys dressed as KISS because the people want real rock and roll. I think doing this leaves them some outs if they need to kind of... They always out. have outs. They I, I, always I, don't have think outs. I don't think they've put all their cards on the table last night. I think no, no, no. This, no. this Avatar thing is is what grabs the headlines far more than a, hey, we're going to get two guys and we're going to continue. That 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 that's That's not the big announcement. This is a technology-based headline-grabbing announcement. I, I don't think anything's off the table. I think you know, you notice on the cruises they bring Bruce up to actually play as a member of Kiss again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think that's that's all on the table still. As far as Gene saying it'll be the last Kiss performance in makeup, I think they'll still do appearances out of makeup because yeah. physically that's got to be so much less demanding than in costume. I think they'll they'll probably will have the official or several official tribute bands, and I think the. The whole the uh sorry the avatar thing is is going to be something as well. That was just the thing they chose to release yesterday. That's a good point. Uh, I think there's a lot more to come. This avatar. I mean, Kenny, if last night they would have announced not the avatar, but hey, you know, uh, Gene and Paul are being replaced by two clones. What do you think the audience would have done? I, I don't. I don't know. It, the reaction was kind of. How would the, and that's yeah. the, the the word? How would have the audience reacted to saying, "Look, these are the clones that are going to replace yeah. Peter, well, <laughs> Paul, actually, and Gene"? How, what was what was what was the reaction to a movie screen showing some avatars? What uh, was the reaction? I think people were dumbfounded. <laughs> I think they thought it was a cartoon or a Pixar movie coming. You know, it, it, you couldn't tell. <laughs> it was I weird. mean, it would have been more they impressive. Had, and I guess, I guess. It, I guess the building, the building these events will take place and have to be conducive to Avatar technology. So you can't just have them walk on out. But no, that would have been far more impressive. Than That's why I suggested screen. the sphere. That's why I, I said think, the sphere. I think Karen's right. It heads to the sphere. It's the sphere. It's it's done by the same people who are running the Ava thing. I'm talking about last night. Oh, last night they could. They, it would have been far more impressive if they found a way to have the avatars walk on out rather than just have a screen oh, showing. Yeah, yeah, do something like the screen. It was, it was weird. It was the same thing you guys saw when they put the code up, the Q code. So it, let me say to you guys, on the pay-per-view, they explained it a bit. So that's where, when you're you live in the building, like, yeah. you're, I could imagine, Kenny, that was kind of like, you know, like, people what like, the fuck, what the fuck is that? You know, like. I was thinking like what you guys are saying, we're going to continue with the cruises play uh, uh, once a year. We'll be playing acoustic sets uh, with, without makeup. That's what I was thinking. Or clone band with the two sons. That's exactly where I was. Well, thinking. you know what? If I, I told Perrin this last night, I texted him. I go, if it's a clone band, boycott, boycott. The boycott's back on. I said, right. the boycott is back on. <laughs> Why? Why? I will not see a clone band of kiss. No, I refuse. Why? The, you know, like, here's why? the thing. Somebody because I go, I go, I go for Gene and I go for Paul. I don't go for clones. Our, like, our me, that's just the way I am. That's how I roll, my friend. That's so how Jamie, I roll. Our yes. little circle of friends here in Montreal, like, reach out to me and say, Perrin, the Australian Pink Floyd experience is playing at the, the the arena in Laval. You know, it's only like sixty bucks or eighty bucks. Why don't you come with us? And I'm like, I have zero interest in seeing the Australian Pink Floyd experience. You know, but but our circle of friends wants to see it. So if if Stefan, but I could still boycott it. I could still boycott it. Can I, I not? Agree. I but, agree. With why you. can I not hold like placards outside of the shows and say, "Do not go in, please"? But, but why is the Australian Pink Floyd experience allowed? And it because just you know, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. There's a big difference because they 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 advertise it as a tribute band. That's the well, difference. I, they I don't go out. Okay. They don't go out saying, "Hi, we're Pink Floyd." That's the difference. But, but when mean, Kiss goes out and says they're a tribute band, that's okay. But if they say they're a Kiss, they're not Kiss. They're a friggin' tribute band. Same goes with Foreigner as well. If you Artists gotta advertise, YouTube. you gotta advertise. Don't trick people with with you know. Well, he's gonna come out for half a song, you know, and then you know, uh, you know, it's really Foreigner. No, it's so not. It's called the Kiss Experience. Is it okay? Because I don't think it'll be called. Well, Kiss. the Kiss. Kiss. Called... You could call it Kiss Experience. You could call it the Elder Tribute. I and don't know. And then you're good. I'm good. I'm good, I'm good with it. Off, if that's the case. Because I don't like trick trickery in advertising. I don't like that. I want to know what I'm buying. As, as a consumer, I want to know what I'm getting. Don't lie to me. Don't trick me with words. Don't play with words with me. 
I get pissed. I don't normally get so worked up about things, I do. but these new these new re-recordings of the first three Bonfire albums with this new singer are horrific. They are a disaster. Oh. They're awful. Well, I don't know how we got the Bonfire, but trickery. trickery. Trickery, trickery. Look, it's I want to go see Pink Floyd, at least one or two members, right? I don't want to see someone pretending to be Pink Floyd because they were in the band as a hired hand for 20 years. That doesn't I, make you a member. But I, I'm just saying, I don't think I don't think the plan is to call the next version of Kiss Kiss. I think the plan from things I've heard is to call it Kiss 2.0 or to call it the Kiss Experience. So you can sell Kiss Experience tickets with four awesome musicians and a big show, just the way you do the Australian Pink Floyd experience, and draw seven or 8,000 people to a small arena and do well with it. And depending on the price, I might go see that because at that I wanna, point- I wanna, uh, I wanna see Dire Straits Legacy with Trevor Yeah, Hall. and, and th there, there's a great example of, and it's called Dire Straits Legacy. Exactly. It's basically all the guys That's who my are point. Dire Straits or a lot of them without Mark Knopfler. And, yeah. you know, on a certain scale, there's interest in it, you know, of course, and everything's of about course. scale. Well, listen, I'm going to say this. I was very surprised and sort of content that they're actually avatars because I would much more like to see this experience as an avatar, maybe as a residency in Vegas, as a cool little thing to watch than to see clones get up there and pretend they're kiss. So that's just my opinion. What I much prefer me? to see the avatars. What What's about that? us four getting up there pretending to be Kiss? What about that? Uh, it would work, well, but I'm are we Kiss or are we the Kiss already. Experience? <laughs> we're just Kiss. Oh, we're Kiss? Oh, we're, 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 we're Venom Incorporated. <laughs> Venom Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's about it, guys. Anything else? I got one thing. Uh, they gave stuff out at the arena, bracelets that lit up and went with the beats of the songs. Can't which... see a damn thing. You gotta put it against yeah, your put, body. Put it right here. Yeah, yeah. It's a bracelet that went up against the uh it flashed and lit up with the songs oh cool very different cool. and on good. the way out they, up. they handed a box to everybody with a gold ticket now i didn't get it wow. going up before. when i met the guy from anthrax rob the, who played with volbeat and anthrax he had a box of them uh, and he said out over there. my friend mike beretta got me one it's a gold ticket from kiss themselves nice thanking you for coming to the show and oh, it's like a passport one get one uh, now, like I said, I went out the front door, Giles, and I got nothing. I doubled back right. to meet my friend to try to catch a ride home, and we couldn't meet the one guy. He left, but they didn't. A lot of people didn't get him. They were coming out to the avenue, the back end of the theater. People were getting him. When I thought that was odd, you're not giving them out on the front, but people on the back got him. Very strange. Right. Yeah, but I'm, I'm lucky. My friend had two, and he gave me one. Well, uh, they're gold. I think 24 karat gold. Very nice. Very weird. Yeah, very nice. Look at that, Kenny. It's very nice. At they least you got something. You certainly, can't, you certainly set list aside and whatever. You can't fault their uh, making a big deal out of this last two shows no, in New they, York. They, it, well, and it was a big deal. If you were a, a Kiss fan or a kid who grew up in the late 70s or, you know, they were, they were New York icons back then and earlier because they were from there, but... I think New York did them right. I think the city actually did it right for once. Right. It's a great way to end it. You know what? And uh, guys, thank you for being on. Everybody, thank you for watching. Thanks would for that. you? And here's the last question to everybody out there watching. Would you go see the Kiss Avatar tour or show residency? Or would you prefer to see Attack of the Clones? Would you like to see me as an avatar on the next Metal Voice panel instead of actually yeah. me? I think that'd be cool. Yes, that'd be cool. And a, and a Funko Pop. Make, make a Funko Pop. <laughs> we might get you guys. Wait, 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 wait! Hold on a second. And what did I get? Pick My up 1992 today? cup. Guys, oh, the metal voice pom pom. We, we told you, cut off the pom pom, and you yeah. good. Lose the pom pom, and we'll take. Them. I want to guys. What is this? Nobody likes pom pom. What the hell's going on? Or I like the pom pom. We want to I, I like the pom pom too. Look yeah, at this. You, know you can do you this mean? as you're waiting for. I don't know the bus or something. Listen, or... The man on the Give street me. needs that hat for my man on the street pieces. See, you know I what? Put this up. I yes. need. Uh, I need one of them hats with the cat ears. Metal voice <laughs> one with the cat ears. Or how about like the beers on top with the uh, the, the straws? So here's the, here's the cap. Eat. So these are just test units. These are just test units at this point. So I'm just nice, gonna... nice guys. Nobody likes. I think maybe the the ladies will like the pom poms. I like the pom pom. I like the pom pom too. It's very Canadian. 
Hey, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, Took. All right, guys. I'm with you, Pat. Right. God gave rock and roll to you. Remember that. Bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.